that hopes of reconciliation are on hold for Iran, with crippling sanctions over its nuclear program still in place and opposing powers lining up against it. Despite all the smiles and handshakes, the US is renewing its trade restrictions and even considering toughening them. Meanwhile, Iran's most outspoken critic, Israel, seems to have a new partner in France, which shot down last week's tentative deal in Geneva. More details now from RT's Tabang Motse. The pieces are in place. We have time and again said that under no circumstances would we seek any weapons of mass destruction, including nuclear weapons, nor will we ever. Iran and IAEA will cooperate further with respect to verification activities to be undertaken by the IAEA to resolve all present and past issues. Warmer words, flowing relations. Yet, just as the deal in Geneva was on the cards between the world powers and Iran, came concern from France. A surprise move that stalled the talks, but earned France new friends in Israel, who'd been the traditional stumbling block up to now. Still smarting from the threats and intense rhetoric of the recent past, Israel refuses to budge. That's a bad deal. It's a dangerous deal because it keeps Iran as a nuclear threshold nation. We are not blind and I don't think we're stupid. As for the main bargaining chips, the sanctions. Lightening up could prove the deal maker, but Congress is having none of it, putting President Obama in a tough spot. I think Rouhani has staked his position on the idea that he can uh, improve relations with the rest of the world. Uh, and so far, he's been saying a lot of the right things. If I were the Prime Minister of Israel, uh, I'd be very wary as well of any kind of uh, uh, talk from the Iranians. And then there's the bargaining hammer. Israel building more settlements when things don't go its way, approving more units only last month, leaving U.S. Congress to get trigger happy with more sanctions. Don't rush into a bad deal with Iran. We already know how Israel's Benjamin Netanyahu feels advocating his case on Twitter through yet another colorful graphic presentation. And the red carpet will be rolled out for its newfound French friend, President Hollande. It's tough to predict whether the P5 plus one will equal unity when they get back around the table next week in Geneva. Taban Mutze, RT, Moscow. Now, although Israel and Saudi Arabia officially have no diplomatic relations, they're rumoured to be preparing a joint bombing campaign against Iran. The Sunday Times newspaper suggests an attack may take place if a new round of international talks fails to produce a deal rolling back to Iran's nuclear power programme. Israel considers Iran its enemy number one and has long accused the country of working on an atomic bomb, a charge that Iran denies. Well, under the uh, strike plan, Saudi Arabia would would grant Israel the use of its airspace. It would also assist Israel in the deployment of combat drones, helicopters and tanker planes. The Saudis are furious and are willing to give Israel all the help it needs. That's what an anonymous source allegedly told the British newspaper. Iranian political analyst Saeed Mohammed Marandi uh, joins us live now to give us a bit of comment on this. Um, thanks very much for coming on to the programme. Um, why would Saudi Arabia want Iran Thank to you. be attacked, do you think? Well, we don't know if these reports are true, but uh, the Saudis and the Israelis are moving closer and closer to one another. Uh, however, it's highly unlikely that uh, the Saudis or the Israelis would really want to attack Iran because at the end of the day, both countries would be losers. They would be seen as aggressors. And uh, obviously, the Iranians would retaliate. The Saudis would be very vulnerable. It would create an economic uh, catastrophe for the world. and only the Saudis and the Israelis would be to blame. The Israelis would, of course, uh, be uh, re facing retaliatory attacks from the Iranians. That would mobilize uh, the whole Middle East, especially people on the streets in support of Iran. It would isolate Israel. The Israelis would be the losing side because if they succeed in destroying a couple of buildings, they would be hit back far harder by the Iranians and the political implications for Israel, Israel would be devastating. So I, I don't think that people really believe that um, a strike is 
uh, anywhere is, is imminent or there's even any uh, uh, realistic uh, uh, scenario where the Israelis would carry out an attack. After all, the Americans, with all their firepower, fa uh, were failed in their attempt to bring about uh, an attack on Syria because uh, world public opinion and American public opinion simply would not accept it. So are you skeptical of this report that's appeared in the uh, Sunday newspapers today in Britain? Yes, I think so. I'm skeptical. I think that the Israelis and the Saudis, it's clear that they're cooperating at many levels to put uh, pressure on the five plus one to uh, work against uh, an, a, a meaningful agreement. We saw, for example, in the negotiations, the Iranian side was very reasonable. Uh, the American side, of course, was discredited because uh, the Americans agreed to something, one thing, and then when the French came, the French foreign minister, and changed the whole text, uh, the Americans uh, changed their position. And afterwards, the American uh, Secretary of State had the audacity to claim that the, it was the Iranians who were at fault. So I think the international community, and the, the Russian foreign minister, very much to his credit, pointed this out, that it was the American side and the, the West that uh, was, was being dishonest here and, and uh, untrustworthy because they accepted one thing and then the next day after the French foreign minister came, they accepted something diff very different and then they went, were dishonest about it and tried to pin the blame on Iran. So I think this strengthened Iran's position a great deal, these negotiations. It showed both to the Iranian public and to the international community that the problem never lied with Iran and it was really the West has been dishonest and that has been trying to deprive the Iranian people of their rights and pursuing illegal sanctions against ordinary Iranians at the same time. OK, thank you. We do have to leave it there. That's Iranian political analyst Said Mohammed Morandi. Thank you very much.